Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Fanshawe's virtual open house. Uh, this session is covering the School of Health Sciences. Um, we actually have a bit of a dual session today, so we're going to start with School of Health Sciences, and then uh, in about half an hour, we're going to jump specifically into uh, the pre-health program session. Uh, my name is Elliot. I'm going to be moderating the session today, and I work uh, at the college in the marketing department, and uh, I'm joined by Tony. Tony, how's it going? Things are going well. Thanks. Excellent, excellent. We appreciate you uh, coming in to, to chat with us today. Um, so before we get started, uh, just a couple of quick housekeeping items that I want to cover for everybody tuning in at home. Um, you probably already noticed cameras and mics are off for attendees for this session, but you can submit questions um, in through the question feature in the GoToWebinar panel. So there should be a little question mark icon that you can click to open up, um, and then you can fire questions in that way as we go through. Um, those questions will come through to me, and then I'll uh, I'll prompt them over to Tony. Um, so we're going to let him uh, run through a bit of a presentation first. He's going to tell us about the program, some high-level details, and then we'll address questions uh, at the end. Okay. Um, before I throw it to Tony, I'm just going to copy and paste a few quick links into the chat feature for everyone. Um, this is for uh, our info kiosk. Um, in case you have any questions uh, later um, about Open House, uh, about Fanshawe, anything else, basically, we have uh, a few different info kiosks set up to help you out throughout the day. Um, and we also have the Open House website, which is where you can see the schedule for the other uh, live program sessions later on this afternoon. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Tony. Um, do your thing, and, and I'll be back uh, in a few minutes. Okay, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. So welcome everyone uh, to the uh, virtual open house for Fanshawe College and more specifically for my program area, uh, the School of Health Sciences. Um, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Tony Millette. I'm the Associate Dean for the School of Health Sciences. My role is to uh, to basically is to, to run those programs and, and manage the programs and ensure that we're doing uh, everything that we need to be doing to offer you uh, the best educational experience that we can. Um, much of you are either in sitting in one of two different situations. One is is maybe you've already accepted to to Fanshawe College and to one of the health uh, science programs, and for that, uh, welcome aboard. While others may be sitting on the fence and trying to make a decision as to uh, where they want to accept their offer. Uh, there may be some that are maybe a year away and are just being very proactive with it. So. Uh, kudos for to all of you, and uh, you know it's it's really a wise thing to start doing your research before you're making such a such an important decision about your about your future. The School of Health Sciences is essentially made up of 12 different programs. We have two uh, one-year postgrads, which means that you're already out in the field and working in that that discipline and want to improve a credential. Uh, those areas are uh, MRI and uh, anesthesia assistance. Our, our main programs are essentially um, free health sciences, uh, massage therapy, occupational uh, therapy assistance, respiratory therapy, pharmacy technician, community pharmacy assistant, fitness and health promotion, dental assisting, dental hygiene, uh, MRAD, so medical radiation uh, technician, uh, and so those are essentially the ones. If if those are not in your 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 uh, area of uh, uh, experiential learning, uh, then maybe you're in the wrong one. But uh, hopefully, uh, this is this is exactly where you need to be. Um, so our programs essentially are are a mixed bag of different levels and different years. So there's a one year program, which is a certificate. There's some that are a two-year program, which is your, your typical diploma program. And then there's your three-year program or your advanced diplomas. All programs uh, essentially run in the same uh, methodology, meaning there's three major points or three major ways of, of uh, continuing your education. One is through the didactic piece, which is your typical lecture. Uh, the other areas is that we move into the labs uh, where you can practice hands-on. And then the third area is, is called your, your clinical experience. So I'm just gonna kind of break into those a little bit. When you go into your breakout sessions and you go into the program area that you're specifically looking for, 
they'll be able to, to give you a greater detail of what occurs in these areas. And, and what I really, really ask you to do is, is, is ask your questions now. Uh, get to know your, your program coordinators who, and, and faculty who you will be speaking with, and, and don't be afraid to ask your questions. You guys are making a, a very, uh, very important decisions, and it needs to be an informed decision. So I really implore that you uh, you seek that out. So getting back to the first modality or didactic lecture-based, because of COVID and because of the way things are and, and with us trying to ensure that we're providing you with a safe learning environment, all of these will continue to be online, okay? So uh, all of your, your anatomy and physiology, all the ones that you just basically would be sitting in a classroom learning is going to be uh, completed online. So you can be anywhere to complete those. Most of the programs in the School of Health Sciences are what we're calling a blended model. So the didactic or the theory will be taught online and then you would have to come on to campus and go into the labs and actually do the hands-on component. So theory is online, didactic or the hands-on practicing where you're using the actual equipment that you will in a simulated environment will take place in, in classrooms at Fanshawe on campus. The third component is the clinical piece. And that's where you're out doing, you know, some people might call it co-op, um, those types of things. You're gonna be in the hospital setting, depending on your program, you could be in community, or you could be right on Fanshawe's campus, uh, completing your, your hands-on experience um, right on site. So I can give you some examples of each. Uh, so getting back to the lab, we have um, what we call a simulation areas. So we try to mimic, you know, what an operating room looks like, what a hospital room would look like. And we have all this technology where we put you into the labs to, to kind of role play and go through these different exper experiences. It's a type of way of getting you ready for the hospital or wherever you're going to be doing your placement. The other uh, area is that some programs may do some of these labs virtually. Again, so these are the specific questions that you need to ask your program coordinator when you're meeting with them later today about how much time am I going to need to spend on campus and how much of this can I do at home. Again, depending on, on where you are with your, with your clinicals, you could be, as I say, in the hospital or in the community. Massage therapy will do some outreaches uh, where they're doing some special events and things like that. Um, we have two really cool things that we're very proud of. And, and one thing is that in massage therapy, we have what they call the MEND clinic. This is a fully working massage therapy clinic where the public comes on site and students in that program are able to provide treatments to the general public. Uh, so it's working as a, as a, as a full-fledged clinic and it provides you with that, that, that hands-on learning experience and dealing with the, with the public. So that is part of something that we do where you can meet some of these competencies um, kind of face-to-face -face being on site and not necessarily out in the clinic, uh, out in the clinical field. The other area, and we're also very excited about it, is it, it, we've just opened it up, is that we've just uh, completed our for our own uh, dental clinic. So for the dental program, such as uh, dental assisting and dental hygiene, we have a fully functional, brand new, state-of-the-art, uh, maybe some of you have seen it on the news, there's been a lot of press coverage about it, uh, but a brand new facility in which you can learn. So in the early stages of your program, it will meet the, the purposes of being your lab. And then as you go further on into the program, we invite the general public in, and that's where you're gonna get your hands on patient experience. This is required for graduation. So if you're, if you're not able to get the hands on experience on a live patient, uh, you will not be able to, to meet the requirements to write your licensing exam. So we're very, very excited about this. It is very cool. And uh, I can't wait for you guys to get in there and start learning with it. Something that we do need to, to chat about, and, and I'm sure that the program coordinators will also uh, discuss this, 
And the reason why we're all bringing it up is because it's something that we see year after year. And we wanna make sure that you're completely informed um, as to what is required. So when we're talking about the clinical piece and going out into hospitals and going into uh, the different learning environments, there are certain rules that need to be kind of put into place. And with that is your requirements for, for clinical. So your immunization that needs to be up to date, you know, your criminal record checks that need to be up to date, you're gonna get a whole list of things that you need to do. What's important to remember is that those are not our rules, meaning Fanshawe Colleges. When you go out into clinical, you are a guest of another institution or a business or a hospital, and they have to, and they're responsible for you, and they're responsible for their patients at the same time. So they give us a list of things that you need to have in place and to provide evidence that you've completed it before they will allow you into their facility. So when they say that you need to have, you know, first aid CPR, make sure that you have it because if you don't, you won't be able to go into clinical and get it done in advance. Everything is going to start kind of piling on you as far as deadlines and things that need to be done. Make sure you find out when you need to have all of this stuff completed and ensure that you do because you will not be allowed to go into clinical. And if you can't go into clinical, you won't be able to meet the requirements for those courses. Okay. So no surprises. We want to be, you know, upfront with you right off the bat that we have, uh, have that clear. Okay, you'll get all the information that you need. We need you guys to follow up on it and get everything in and so that we can uh, get you safely out into clinical, especially with all the stuff that's going on out there. Uh, we do provide clinical placements through all of this, but we need to ensure that we're doing everything safely. Another thing that's kind of uh, very cool as far as the, um, the programs in health sciences, and, and you'll hear this kind of word being thrown around when you're at different schools and you're entertaining other programs and that's whether the program is accredited or not. All health science programs that need to be accredited, we have full accreditation for. And that's something to be very proud of because it demonstrates our, our level of quality. And I know it's probably not the highest thing on your list right now with your decision-making, but trust me, it means everything later on. Okay, so it shows that we do our due diligence. We shows that we're uh, up on the latest and greatest. It shows that um, a third party has come in and taken a look at our program and evaluated it and have given us the, the full stamp of approval that we're doing the right things and we do things really, really well. Another thing to understand is, is that once you're completed your programs, the majority of them require because they are a regulated profession, that you go on and write a licensing exam after completion. Our programs, I'm very happy to say, most of them have up to 100% uh, success rate in, in, on writing the exams uh, after they graduate. Uh, resp respiratory therapy, uh, as, a, as a great example, not only did they get 100%, but they also finished top one and two um, of test results across the entire country. So, you know, we've, we've just done some curriculum review and really built up on that program and the results of that are, are paying off. And so we know now that what we are doing is something special and, and that we're doing things really, really well. The last thing that I kind of wanted to, to get into a little bit before we get into some questions, and please ask me the questions uh, when we get through that. Uh, don't be afraid to ask. I think the biggest selling point uh, of the programs uh, that I have in my portfolio is the staff and the faculty, the teachers and the coordinator team that run these programs. They are outstanding. And I can speak that, uh, you know, very highly of this because I've worked at other colleges and I've, and I've, I've been part of other colleges uh, in the similar role that I'm in now. And I quite honestly have not seen uh, this level of uh, professionalism and expertise by the faculty. They are dynamite and they're student focused. They want you to be successful and they're gonna do what they need to do to give you what you need to be successful. So that's kind of key because the onus is still on the student to do the work, work your tail off, do what you can uh, to learn and they're gonna be right along there beside you, okay? Um, 
so please don't be afraid to reach out to them. Don't be afraid to contact your, yeah, even working remotely, uh, a portion of their program needs to be done synchronously, meaning it's live, kind of like what I'm doing now. Uh, and, and that allows for dialogue even when you're working remotely. They will also have office hours where you can schedule an appointment and you can meet virtually and discuss things within your program. Please take advantage of that. So to wrap things up, I guess from, from my, my perspective is, is really take advantage of today. Get the time, ask your questions and get the information that you require to make the right decision. When you put everything together, I'm quite confident that Fanshawe will be the right decision. And we really look forward to seeing you starting here with us, either virtually, face-to-face, -face, or online uh, in the fall. So if there are any questions, I will uh, open up the floor and, uh, and we can go from there. So enjoy the day, enjoy your weekend, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Tony, much appreciated. Uh, lots of info. Lots to take in, um, and yeah, we've absolutely. got lots of questions coming in, so that's great. <laughs> awesome. Um, so just a, a quick reminder for everyone tuning in, um, submit your questions in through the questions feature. Uh, there should be a little question mark icon that you can open up in the GoToWebinar panel, and those will send the questions through now, okay? Um, so we've got uh, about 13, 14 minutes, um, so we'll, uh, we'll get as far as we can. If there is anything that we don't get to, um, you can either visit uh, the info kiosks or the open house website, or you can also email my future at fanshawseed.ca. Okay, I'll say that again before we wrap up. Uh, Tony, let's start with um, An job easy one. prospects uh, for healthcare admin and management. Um, can you give us sort of some high level career opportunities? Was, which program area? Healthcare, uh, healthcare admin? admin and management. Okay, that I believe is offered out of the School of, of Business. Um, and, and I have to apologize, um, I don't have that program, so I don't have that information. Uh, but check out the, um, uh, the, the program on the website and see which school it falls under, and then connect with them. I did run a, a similar program, it was a degree program at Seneca. Um, and, and, the, and, and the jobs were, were pretty, uh, pretty uh, relevant and evident. Um, so I think it's a good move, for sure. Well, we, we were trying to catch you off guard. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, we got we to gotta use you what we can, right? Um, yeah. Fitness and health promotions. Uh, January intake? Yes? I no? believe just the fall. Just, the, just September? Mm -hmm. uh, ba, 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 ba. We have um, some questions about co-op, um, so specifically for pre-health, and I know we're going to dive into pre-health deeper in uh, in about 10 minutes, um, mm -hmm. but could you maybe speak to co-op just sort of across the school and, and what uh, what opportunities are there? Okay, so as far as, as co-op, co-op is a little bit different because it's a paid placement um, usually in the School of Business, and there are, are some health programs, none that we currently have, that have a co-op. We have clinical placements, so it means part of your, your program will be completed out in the field, meaning you'll be out in the hospitals or, um, you know, in public safety, you might be in the ambulances, all those types of things, but they're unpaid, and they're directly related to your program area. So if you're in MRT, then you're working with the in the x-ray department uh, finishing some of your your clinical placements some of your objectives that you need to meet in the hospital setting so, so it's, it's are, all dependent on which program okay are, now are these sessions um, um they're they're mandatory components i'm assuming yeah. um and yeah. are they coordinated um like internally do we help uh, set students yeah. up with with the placements yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a department that will, will help you find your, your placements. We will find your placements. Um, some programs may have the ability where you might be able to complete your placement if there's a final consolidation back home, um, if, that, if that works. But um, that needs to be discussed early on. Sometimes they can do it, sometimes they can't. So um, start eyeballing that stuff up and asking the questions um, when you get in with your specific programs. Perfect. Good to know. Thank you. 
Um, this is a, a little bit more of a, a general question. Um, if someone's looking to uh, eventually become a physician, how many years of study um, and sort of what would the what would be the progression that they'd be looking at to to go that way for a career path? Yeah, this, so that's that's a tough one depending on on which area you want to go. Um, there have been many who have gotten through uh, started with a college uh, program, got some work experience, and then just kind of kept working on their undergrad um, uh, to get into into med school. Uh, it's it's definitely doable. I don't. We're working hard with the universities to try and get some better transfer opportunities, but um, but yeah, it's 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 kind of an individual pathway that you're going to have to develop, um, and and start asking the, your program coordinators. You know, have you heard of anybody who's maybe come out of respiratory therapy and and went on to uh, become a physician, and then maybe you know what pathway did they take and how did that how did that happen and how did that occur. We're starting to see more of it, um, but I think we can do a better job of it, uh, and and it's it's depending on on the universities as well. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a bit a bit of a tough one. Um, a couple of uh, admissions related stuff. Um, so we'll we'll try and answer them to the best of our abilities. Mm -hmm. um, first installment of tuition. Uh, do we know when when the first installments are due? I know I, that's a bit. Of one it's not yeah see that's because usually i give the wrong answer and then people get angry with me and they said well you know tony <laughs> said it, it was i didn't have to pay till tuesday and apparently it was monday and the best thing to do is contact the admissions department ask them directly and get it straight from from them what's key is that if you are sitting on an offer and there's a deadline of something that needs to be done make sure you meet that deadline because a lot of our programs in health sciences are waitlisted if you fall off that list, then they bump up from the wait list to to fill that spot. So, really read what's sent to you, uh, and and follow the follow the lines and and ask the questions. There's also um, on on the FanshaweC.ca website. Uh, I I believe it's under student success, but I know there's an important dates page. Um, so that there might be more info there as well. Yeah. Um, if if you want more info on that, that's one of those um, email my future at fanshawc.ca, and they'll definitely be able to help you out. Um, you mentioned waitlisted programs uh, mm -hmm. for people that are currently on on the wait lists. Um, do we know how how late offers tend to go out? Like, would it is it right up until it, it, you know the start of class, a few days in? Yeah, it could be even a few days in. Uh, I've seen it where, for some reason, you know, uh, life changes occurred and someone wasn't able to to sit in the program, and and then a spot would open up. So, uh, you know, we go up until day ten uh, for admissions into, into programs. Um, so, you know, if you're high up on the wait list, and uh, there's still a there's still a, a possibility there. Awesome. Um, just a, a quick note. I see lots of questions coming in about sessions, guys. This is. Uh, an overview on the School of Health Sciences as a whole. Um, there are program specific sessions for, for each of the health sciences programs that are going to be running this afternoon um, and uh, you can see a full schedule of that on the Open House website. So I, I've posted in the chat um, openhouse.fanshawc.ca uh, all of the program specific sessions will be there so you can if you're looking for specific information I'd, I'd start there. Um, those sessions are running late this afternoon. Yeah. Um, let's see where we can go to next. Um, what, uh, again, this is a, a little bit more program specific, but if you mm -hmm. had to sort of speak generally, what should students um, expect uh, for a course load per semester? Um, so like how many courses, how many hours, that kind of mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, it, it, you're right. It, it does vary, um, but we, we you could see anywhere from you know six courses a semester to to maybe eight. Um, it depends on you know some of them may be labs, and if they're labs, they tend to run for like four hours. So you might see less courses, but your hours may be the same. So it, it does vary. You can get a you can see on the on the website um, if you go into courses under each individual program. Uh, you can see how many courses by level they call a semester a level 
So that's how many, and those typically are, are, are a three hour lecture or a three hour course and maybe a four hour, three or four hour lab. So you can kind of get an idea of what, how busy you're gonna be. Perfect. Um, about uh, five minutes left, uh, just to let everybody know before we transition uh, directly into pre-health. Um, we do have lots of questions, so we're, we're trying to get through them as best we can, guys. Um, this one is a little bit tough. Um, it's, uh, I guess, COVID related. And just to let everyone know, um, Fanshawe is, we're, we're following what um, what our local health board's recommendations are. So we all of our policies um, are coming from what the province recommends and for the, from what the local health units recommend. Um, but uh, just going off of that, um, there's a question about clinical placements and have they been running through lockdown? Will they continue to run if uh, if the lockdown levels elevate? Um, what does that look like for the past year? Mm -hmm. No, great question. Uh, really good question. Uh, so originally things shut down and, and so we, we started to work through that. And, and, and again, I, I spoke earlier that a lot of this depends on, on the placement itself. So the good thing is, is that because we're health science based and because we're working in hospitals and because we're providing care, they really need our help. And, and so we were able to maintain uh, our placements for the most part. And what's, what's really very uh, interesting and, and very good for Fanshawe is that we're right smack dab in the middle of a university uh, city that has a, a huge hospital system and a lot of networking and a lot of clinical opportunities. So we have great relationships with our clinical placements. So we're able to, to maintain our placements, um, but with some specific rules. So if there's a known COVID positive patient, our students do not go near that patient. So there's rules that are in place to protect those, uh, to allow them to keep learning safely. And the PPE is the same as what's in the hospitals and, and, the, and, the, and the workarounds and the conversations are, are always ongoing to ensure that everybody is safe. So long story short, we have a, a, a great um, list of hospital placements that we were able to maintain through, um, uh, throughout COVID. Our uh, respiratory therapy is another prime example. They wanted our graduates out early so that they could hire them to help out with the pandemic. Awesome, thanks. Um, and just uh, we touched on it earlier, but another question came in. Um, we do facilitate uh, the placements, so you do not have to to go out and find those on your own. That's right. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this, Tony, but I'm going to take a stab at it. We're getting getting our money's worth out of you today. Um, <laughs> but we have uh, a question from an international student, um, and they are planning on writing their IELTS. Mm -hmm. right? Is that ringing a bell yeah. um yeah. so they're wondering if they pass that um what are the odds that they will be admitted um to one of our programs um and uh i don't know if you'll have again any insight on this but is there any potential to be uh enlisted um like this coming september or january yeah i would i would go to internationals admissions uh maybe we can send them a link um through chat or or but uh, there was a thing, you wanna make sure that IELTS uh, is running because of COVID, it had shut down because they couldn't do it virtually. So there's a, there's a couple that are replaced, that have replaced that. Um, again, so, so just make sure that uh, everything is up and running and that you have the ability. And with, your, with that test, there's a certain score that you need to have. So it's not just a pass fail. So make sure you look at the program area that you're interested in and to ensure that you get at least that minimum level and it'll be listed on the website what is required. Perfect. Um, I've just posted the links again in the chat to both the info kiosk uh, and the uh, international live chat. So that would be a great question to, to jump in and ask them. Yeah. Um, we've only got uh, about 30 seconds left. Um, I'm just gonna take a quick scan. Bah, 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 bah. I know we've got lots of questions, guys. Sorry, we don't have more time, um, but please check out um, the openhouse.fanshawc.ca website, and that's where you'll see a list of all of the program-specific sessions, okay? So you've still got lots of opportunity to, to jump in there and ask those questions, or you can email uh, myfuture.fanshawc.ca. 
Um, yeah. So uh, it's 11.30 now. Um, so Tony, we're going to let you go. Uh, thanks so much. I appreciate you taking the time uh, and, and, and great job with the questions. I know we threw a few curveballs at you. Nah, it's okay. You got me early in the day. So good luck, everybody. <laughs> Hope to see you at Fanshawe. Uh, it really is a great place to learn. Perfect. Thanks again, Tony. Okay. Um, Tara, you want to you wanna jump on with us? Here I come. Perfect. Welcome, Tara. Uh, guys, I'm just going to uh, do a, a quick run through before uh, Tara gets going. Um, we're now going to spend uh, about 45 minutes talking specifically about uh, the pre-health program. Um, so same uh, same sort of housekeeping items, um, cameras and mics are still off, questions can come in through the question feature. Um, and again, check those links um, if you're looking for a different program specific session, okay? Um, so uh, openhouse.fanshawc.ca. Um, I'm going to pass things over to Tara right now. Um, so Tara, you should be able to now pull up your presentation. Got it. Um, so we're gonna let uh, let Tara do her thing um, for 15 or 20 minutes with her presentation. Uh, and then again, we'll do Q&A afterwards, okay? Um, so Elliot, so, can we confirm yeah. they can see my presentation? Cause I cannot see my presentation, is that Yeah, so just uh, just hit the hit the present button. Right now you're just, you, you, we're in the right window, just hit the present button, but you're good to go. Present button. On, uh, in the PowerPoint window. Oh. Okay, so I might just have to see the screen. I've got my present up. Sorry, guys, I just I just can't seem to see it myself. But is there a way to share it or just hit the play button? Uh, just hit the play button. Yeah, um, you're good to go. Um, and okay. uh, if you, you like, can see I can, it. I can, I can, yep, yep. I just can't see it, so that's my problem. Any thoughts? Or if you're working with one monitor, right? Yeah, that's okay. I've known I've done this for a while. Can you guys still see me if I do this? Can you still see me, Elliot? Yep, yep, yep. you're okay. good. You know what, then I'm good because they can see me and I'll just go to my presentation. So as long as they can see me in the presentation, we're good to go. Perfect. All, All right, yeah, you're good. Take, take it away. Okay, um, first I just want to welcome you to the Pre-Health Science Pathways to Advanced Diplomas and Degrees presentation. Um, the title accurately describes the program but from here on out it's a bit of a mouthful so we'll probably just say pre-health or pre-health science my name is tara lawrence i'm coordinator of the program and joining me in behind the scenes today are two of our faculty team members peter cadeau who also is the professor for chemistry and patrick pace who is the professor for physical sciences so we are so happy you could join us um, and we know this is a really big decision for you so any information that we could offer you to help you make a good decision. Hopefully it's with us in Fanshawe, but if it's not and this information session helps you, then, then great. Um, that's what we're looking for today. Some of you may have had an opportunity to attend our fall open house. I just wanted to show you that there is the um, pre-recorded on-demand presentation, a full presentation on YouTube. Uh, so you can search Fanshawe College Pre-Health Science London. Uh, <laughs> you'll see me frozen there for a second, which is always uncomfortable, but once you hit play, we're good to go. Um, and that'll be a full complete presentation. So if you're done this and we do our Q&A and you still have questions, hit there, go there. And um, I'm gonna do a lot of the points today, but that does a more thorough description, a little bit longer. We wanted to leave some time today thinking if you've already seen that or you were at the fall presentation, then we can use a bit more time to answer some more of the questions that have popped up. And then of course, some you may have heard already about the Fanshawe College website. If you uh, search pre-health science, um, you'll see that the tab, there's an overview, admission requirements, the courses that you'll take. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you a bit in a bit. There's no need to make any choices in pre-health for first semester, regardless of what it might look like. So level one, you will be enrolled. So you don't have to worry about making any choices. We will do that for you. Um, and anything else, um, there's some more information about pathways from pre-health. So we're going to talk a bit today. The presentations will cover it. But if you get, you know, leave here and think, well, I didn't get to ask that, check that out. And of course, we'll be available for questions as well. And I think Elliot's posting your open house links 
if anything else pops up with respect to admissions, et cetera. Because I know that is a big question for you guys and I appreciate that, um, but I coordinate the program. So I know the admissions coming into the program. Because of the nature of pre-health, we have an idea about what goes on in admissions after, but I'm not an admissions officer. So if we give the, um, I'm not sure if officer is the right word, but I don't work in admissions or advising. So if I gave the wrong information, that would be bad. So um, we always would prefer you to double check with admissions, okay? So I, I won't answer any, I won't be able to answer, necessarily answer your admission question. So what is pre-health? Why come to pre-health? What makes it different, right? If you look at some admission requirements to health care programs, um, a lot of it will say high school, um, you know, level, college courses, university courses, but what does pre-health do? Pre-health is two semesters, so two 15-week semesters of one-year certificate program. It is a big goal. It's designed to provide students with core knowledge, skills, and abilities fundamental to academic success in health science programs, as well as other science-related programs at the advanced diploma or degree level. There's another mouthful, but it's powerful, right? Every word means something here. We in pre-health science understand that a lot of you will take pre-health because you've been thinking about respiratory therapy or medical radiation technology, nursing. As Tony spoke to, we have 12 programs in the School of Health Sciences. You have lots of options at Fanshawe College that do amazing things with simulation and working with patients, um, but they're hard to get into, they're popular. So a lot of people will come to pre-health to get that upgrading, to get those admission points, to get into a career program. Definitely we'll touch on that. But we like to talk about the program with respect to what are you going to get out of that one year? And those are those skills, that fundamental skills that, that are fundamental to academic success, as well as just having an appreciation and understanding about your following choices, right? It, it's a big decision to pick your career. So having that eight months to sort of transition to those um, health science programs that are very rigorous, they demand a lot of time, uh, professionalism, you know, you're going to be working with patients. A lot of our population, student population, are direct entry from high school. You guys have gone through so much lately, as the whole community has, but um, you're, I'm sensing that your resilience to coming online will be there and, and, and strong, but it is a different transition. Um, even as a science student myself in high school, I maybe, maybe took three science courses in a row. I would prefer I would have preferred that <laughs> to English and whatnot. But, you know, some people take, you know, you, you do, you look at your high school, you say, well, if I take math here, I don't want to take biology with it. So you don't have that flexibility in a health career program, right? You have to take all your courses back to back, um, be working with patients and in a lab. So what pre-health does is to instill that sort of fundamental skill set is we start looking at, okay, you're going to have, you know, maybe 30 hours in a career program with your labs and you have to study on top of that. Pre-health has about 18 to 21 hours of in-class. Now, so when I say in-class, the expectation is you wanna study at least one to three hours for every hour you're in class. So you wanna consider like a full-time job. What would I do with 40 hours a week? I'm gonna do pre-health science. But that's also helping us. What we'll look at is how do we summarize material? How do we make connections between material? What are sort of the, um, basic core knowledge foundational that when I'm in that health career program will help me um, transition better to help me make those connections so that when I am in class those 30 hours and I don't maybe have as much time after to study, we've helped you make that, um, help you with those skill sets. The uh, course content has health application and you might see that right off the get go. When you look at your course outline, the courses we'll show you that you take are very heavily science based. So you're not taking two or three, you're taking all of them at once so that's much different some people have been out of school for a while or you have work commitments and family commitments so you know starting back at 18 to 21 hours is very appealing to help do that make that transition but our health um, application piece you'll see that the courses are equivalent to the there are the preparation for a health program so if you didn't take say physics in high school this will replace that but i want you to notice that it's physical sciences so this is the health application um, Anatomy and physiology, right? You think of that when I think of health sciences. Um, physiology is how the body works. And obviously that's a big basis of foundational knowledge. Um, but physical, the term physiology actually means physics of the body. So of course we're gonna teach physics and we're gonna teach it with that health application and we call it physical sciences. So the physics of the body, the, the skill set required to learn that. Biological sciences, same idea. 
right? Instead of getting into the plants, we're sticking to cellular microbiology type stuff. Okay, so there's your health application. And then the skills and the abilities, we really, um, I am so fortunate to work with this amazing um, program team in pre-health and School of Health Sciences. I know Tony mentioned that, but they are phenomenal people, coordinators and faculty. They are part of something called a program review that we are accountable for in our program team. And we look at not just what the faculty and the coordinators feel that the success of a pre-health students are doing in those programs, but also student feedback. Hey, when you took pre-health, what helped? What didn't help? And so we have that constant feedback to come back to our program and say, this is the skill set, this is the content, these are some of the things we want to address for you to make that transition into a health science program. Uh, also, I get to sit on that coordinators meeting every month, and so I hear feedback about our students, about the programs, what's going on. So we're constantly in contact with the health science programs, and that's what's making pre-health different than upgrading through your high schools, your weebles, your general arts, which are all great pathways, all great programs. This is just the difference when you take pre-health. Okay, we're really looking at that fundamental skill set to ensure that if you graduate from pre-health with the minimum requirements and you get an offer of admission to a health career program, you're going to be successful. Okay, that's the goal. Right. So what does the content mean? There's the list of courses. It does look like a lot. It is. Like I said, you're going to take a heavy course load um, in science. So that's just something when you're making your decisions, I want you to be able to consider. So the reason it's full time is, again, we're taking those 18, 21 hours of back to back curriculum and courses, trying to make overlaps for you. So you're starting to make connections between the courses so that when you get into those career programs that have more hours and the expectation you're working with patients or simulation in labs, we've already started to build that skill. Now, please know we do start it that you haven't don't have that skill set yet. So it, we ease into it, but that's the end goal. And you'll also see that we um, break out our courses, like we take anatomy and biology. So we give you longer time to learn smaller amount of material. Okay, so even though you look like you might have the actual, the extra course, it's actually spreading out the material so we can give you a chance to really absorb it. And not just that, think about the skill set. You know, um, I really just like the word memorize, but it's reality. You do have to memorize. How do you make connections? How do you critically think? How do you solve equations? Um, mathematically, like, you know, you're thinking about your logistics, you're with a patient in, in an ambulance, you're not pulling out your phone to figure out the calculation. More importantly, um, we want you to do, if you did pull out your phone to do the calculation, we, and you made a mistake, you know, you hit the bump and you made a mistake, we want you to know that that was a mistake before you give a dose. So it's an appreciation for numbers, things like that. So as I said, there is no course selection semester one. Some people will look at the courses in semester two. There is an option to um, switch up your physical sciences and your mathematics. And the reason is, this is a foundational program. You're still making your choices. A lot of people come in thinking, well, um, I know some nurses, they got good jobs, and then they get in there and like, oh, bodily function's not my thing. Um, you know, or they thought they knew what respiratory therapy was, or they, I often hear like, I want to go into x-ray or, or respiratory therapy. I'm like, oh, they're very different. So now that you're in the program semester one, and you've kind of thought about those things a little bit more, and you've seen more career programs, you might change your mind. We don't want you to lose your whole year. We do have those fundamental skills, those course content, and there's other science related programs out there that you could apply for. So the two things is maybe I don't require the physical sciences anymore. Or maybe I require more mathematics, more of a calculus mathematics or an algebra um, and vectors. So we do offer that second semester. You need to do nothing until you come to the college and we will help you with that second semester. Okay, so don't worry in the summer and you see I've got courses. We will enroll you and give you what courses in your schedule is and you won't have to do anything. Okay, so the other thing to note here is semester one, you have to take them all before you can continue to semester two. So again, we're preparing that sort of concurrent education, making connections, that's what's different in pre-health. So we, um, all of the semester one is required for semester two. So it's not like you can take biology semester one and then not take it semester, take chemistry semester two without that prerequisite, okay? So you have to have, you know, all of the courses to take it second semester. And I get the question a lot like, why? It's a foundation of course. Well, no, we're, we're designed to be a full-time program. That's what's different. Uh, so that's developing that skill set. And I often say to people, if I had you give you a project and said, I want you to create me this fabulous ex um, presentation with Excel using graphs and formulas, but I never showed you how to use Excel, I'd be setting you up to not do well on the assignment. Same thing. We're not going to continue to second semester without the prerequisites. Okay. Um, 
so the format is going to be online for September. So we have had the opportunity to, um, you know, use the software this year, figure out what works, um, got some great feedback from the students this year. And again, I work with this amazing team who put together a curriculum, curriculum that I'm proud of. Um, and we will be online. So as much as we'd love to see you, it is online. Now, that being said, people, I know some of you have other commitments and workloads. I want you to understand it is considered a full-time program. So we ran into that this year where we do have a schedule for your classes to see us live. The, there is a direct correlation for the people that attend those and the success in the program. Not just attending, but doing really well, right? Not just they're being successful, but doing well. Um, so we will, there is pre-recorded presentations. There's weekly live tutorials where you can come in and ask any questions based on that. Uh, professors will do drop-ins and office hours to sort of summarize. And that's where you're gonna hear the little tidbits about things that you might miss too, right? That those little in-class conversations that we're missing now, we have them online. So we expect and, and would like you to attend. And more importantly, your evaluations are set at that time. I do not have a schedule. You will probably get it at the same time I do. Um, and that schedule will show us when we have our tutorials and more importantly, your evaluations are at that time and they're not rescheduled. This program is, um, students are all applying to, some students are applying to highly competitive programs. So we uh, want to make sure everything is fair. So your evaluations are set at that time as a group where you are invigilated, okay? Um, so the, that's the general format of online. I will answer whatever I can to that after, but I just wanted people to be aware of what to expect when you're making your decision that um, given the current condition and keeping doing our duty to keep everybody safe, um, we will fall with the health practices and that is for our program to be online. And, um, but you will have a schedule and we will have live times to help you out, okay? It's different, but it's working. <laughs> um, but it does require some independent learning as well. So we give you pacers. If you follow them and you attend everything, we'll have people at the end of the semester and say, I didn't do that well, but then I can look and say, well, you only watched, you know, this not many of the presentations you didn't attend, you know, the live stuff. So be prepared for that, right? I understand some of you may have work commitments, but uh, if you're making the decision to accept this program, understand it is full time, okay? That if you wanna really do well. Um, now, we will have people who maybe have an IEP, um, and I understand you might require a reduced course load. So while level one is a prerequisite for level two, there is really only one option um, to make sure you're successful and still be able to continue if you are reduced course load. So I would encourage you to reach out to the accessibility services. There was a, they did a presentation back in um, the fall. So that's on YouTube, uh, but they'll also be in our links for our open house. Uh, I'd encourage you to register soon if that's the case so we can work with you and have you all set up before September with your courses, how they'll look and any um, accommodations in place so that you can, you know, hit the ground with all the resources you need. Uh, and the Student Success Advisor right now works really um, closely with our program. Um, and that's her email, just in case you haven't been able to touch base with me in the summer. I am out of office, but we do have an acting coordinator, so it'll all be listed um, for you under our financial website. Textbooks is another common question. It's not really updated till the spring. Um, we, that's when we work on our curriculum. I don't foresee too many changes. Big ones you wanna really think about are math because we have to have the up-to-date um, MyLab online work, regardless of whether we were in class or in this format, we've been using that. There might be a few changes to it. So that's why we're not gonna, we don't have a list right now. But if you go to fanshawretail.ca, it'll be updated. So could you buy used? For sure. Um, but you wanna make sure you're within the right additions and recommendations in particular for your maths. Um, and you know anything with equations, okay? But math is a big one. Some of us are, a lot are moving online right now too because you're online. So there might be different options to choose from. Okay, but again, just make sure you check it out near the spring. I won't be able to tell you exactly right now. So all of this I really wanted to focus on is the success of a pre-health science student in a health career program. We do have a very high success, the program has a very high success rate. Um, for graduates of pre-health who are then admitted and go through a health career program, it's over 90%. Um, so that says those foundational skill sets, that back-to-back -back learning, that's what, that's the difference, okay? As well, you might change your mind. Um, I did, I'm not anywhere where I thought I would have been in first year, except in science. <laughs> but a high number of students that don't choose health 
we have statistics at Fanshawe that show that they are at other programs at Fanshawe and doing really well. Okay, so again, that's that foundational skill set. So if you start the program and you think, oh, yeah, 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 I'm not sure, um, that's okay. There's some options, and I'll talk a bit about pathways closer to the end. So Tony addressed this, but if you weren't on there, they're listed here are some of our programs in the School of Health Sciences. I do have paramedic here. They're on the School of Public Safety, um, but it is a program that pre-health science does prepare for. The ones in red are actually students can be given advanced standing. What that means is I complete pre-health. Uh, I meet all, I have did it full time, back to back. I've met those conditions, the minimum requirements, so I've done really well. I might get advanced standing in those courses, usually in the anatomy type courses or your communication type courses, okay? So I like highlighting this because it shows you how much the programs work together. So I'm preparing for the advanced diploma and degree um, and then I choose to go to dental assisting, which is a two-year diploma, I'm gonna be have the option to get some advanced credit. Um, also wanting to note while we're here, we're gonna start talking a little bit about how pre-health prepares for um, a health career program in the sense of admissions, the advantage from an admission perspective. One thing of the um, programs at Fanshawe College, there's things called highly competitive. Mm, basic understanding is lots of people apply for a few spots. So we're talking, you know, seven, eight, 900, for applicants for 52 spots. So it is difficult to get in, it's highly competitive. And that's something you wanna look at because you need to be prepared for that. Um, eight of the college's programs were in the School of Health Sciences that are highly competitive, okay? So you're picking a popular field, which is fantastic, <laughs> um, but also be prepared for that. So as Tony mentioned, you know, do your research there to know what you're getting into. So admission to pre-health doesn't guarantee you a spot into those subsequent, subsequent programs. It does offer you additional consideration. So again, I'm not admissions, but the general way that works is you can be eligible for a health career program. I could have taken high school, upgraded, general arts, I'm eligible. Then they add a column that's called post-secondary. And if you're in pre-health, they double that column after first semester. So if we're both perfect and you're in pre-health, you're gonna maximize out at 72 on an admission points in that column, I'd only get only get 60 as a perfect student. So when you're talking hundreds of you know applicants for a few spots, that couple points is important. So that's um, another way to sort of look at coming to pre-health is you will be given those additional consideration. And that's why people, they tell you to come to our program for the success piece, because we know our students do well, but also I know you're really your end goal is, but I really want to get into that nursing program. They were 90s this year if from um, free health. MRT, same thing. So you you know you still need to do really well while you're there. Okay, so there is um, I'm gonna get admission questions, I'm sure, but I'm telling you we gotta gotta send you back to um, admissions. So um, Elliot posted the openhouse.fanshaw link for the kiosk. If you go there. There's live chats all day if you have further questions, but attend the career programs that you're um, interested in. Their sessions are this afternoon as well. Okay, and that'll that'll be able to answer those questions. I can help you with pre-health ones. And then um, listed all over the website is admissions at fanshawe.ca, advising at fanshawe.ca. And we even have a Fanshawe Pathfinder, so it can help you, here's my end goal, what's the best way to get there? So lots and lots of ways to help you make a good decision for you after these presentations. So while we talk about pathways, majority of you, like I said, will think about School of Health Sciences, you're coming because you're interested in that. But what if I'm not sure? Um, I did mention the advanced credit into some of the, um, you know, the practical nursing, pharmacy, massage, both dental programs. I put massage twice, I must really like that one. <laughs> Fitness and health, et cetera. Um, biotechnology at Fanshawe College. There's other programs at Fanshawe that we don't have a direct um, preparation for, but you might be interested in and that's why we offer that second semester's choices between your calculus math instead of the health science math um however i get through first semester maybe i'm not successful in a course or two um maybe it's not for me general arts and science is a program at Fanshawe college where you have a little bit more options a little more flexibility in your program your course choices um you know at that point you might be changing your path they you can talk to them about transferring the credits you were successful in. So you're not losing the entire certificate year. Might take you a little bit, you know, into the spring or summer, but you could finish with a general arts certificate. 
And then when you go to our pathways in under more information on Fanshawe College, if you go to more information and you click the pathways, you'll see that we have agreements with universities. Um, and in fact, some of them also offer transfer credits, so meaning if you've completed pre-health with a certain um, grade, they will offer you some of your elective credits so that you reduce your course loads. And then some are just saying we, we will accept this pre-health as a prerequisite. I will tell you, if you change your mind or you're thinking about others, things outside of Fanshawe, outside of the School of Health Sciences, you need to contact that school because we won't um, be able to answer those questions for you. So give them a call if you're thinking, you know, I don't know, Dalhousie out east, call them and say, I'm going to take this. Would you accept that as a prerequisite? So that would be something you would want to do your research on, okay? And then our admission requirements, the easy way to say it to come to pre-health is you, you need to graduate um, from high school with at least the English and a math and a science. This is your minimum. So I often get phone calls to say, yeah, but if they took in, they took this math, they won't get in. I think, well, why would you wait until you take our math? So our advice to you is if you have the opportunity, the program is designed that you've taken these courses. So you will, you will be, you know, ready, but people who've taken more do think differently and are a little bit differently prepared for pre-health. So I would encourage you to take more. If you're questioning yourself to say, oh my gosh, but if I take that math, I'm never going to get in. I would question how you're going to do in a college level math when you don't have any other options. So try it now while you got some options or you have some options. Okay, so that's the you know, overall for our admissions. And then um, we've already listed some of those sites for you. So I'm gonna close out the presentations and see if I can come find you again. And there, and then answer your questions um, based on that. So that was just a short brief one, a little bit longer than I was expecting actually, but. Uh, Hopefully we have some time to answer some more questions. Normally we know what you're going to ask, so we kind of got a good feel for it. We good? Sarah, well done. Thanks very much. Mm. Oh, you're welcome. I couldn't um, see me. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. You're back. You're back. Everything went great. Uh, we have a ton of questions, which is awesome. Okay. Um, before we get into that, um, before I hand it over to you guys, I just want to mention a few quick things. Um, First of all, there's a ton of questions around delivery. Um, guys, this one's really tough. We can't commit to anything um, for the fall or for future intakes because everything is dependent on what the province will allow us and what the local health units will allow. Um, would we like to be on campus in September? Yes, but we, we really can't promise that at this time. Um, are there lab-based programs on campus right now? Do we have those running? Pre health doesn't have them, um, but if you're in a career program, yeah, under restrictions with PPE, um, my understanding is they are running, but that would be a question for those programs. But pre health doesn't have the um, face to face labs, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. Right. Okay. So, sort of take that, guys, as sort of the, the general rule right now. Um, anything lecture based is going to be online. Um, if you are in, you know, for example, uh, dental, um, the labs will be on campus, but again, that could change. There's lots of time between now and then. So we hope to see you, um, but we can't really commit to anything at this point. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention before we dive into the Q&A is that we've got um, all the program specific sessions uh, starting this afternoon. The first one starts um, at about 12.45, half an hour from now. So massage therapy, uh, dental, both assisting and hygiene, medical radiation tech, fitness health promotions, um, uh, pharmacy assistant, pharmacy tech, respiratory therapy, and occupational therapist. That uh, All of those programs have their own uh, specific sessions that are running this afternoon, and you can check out those um, through the openhouse.fanshawc.ca link. Okay, uh, so with that, I'm going to throw it over to uh, Peter, Patrick, and Tara Elliot. to tackle the Q&A. Elliot, before we get started, um, yes. I, can't, I can't view any of the questions. Nothing's coming up on mine. Am I down as a uh you i can see them Come yeah you're a panelist well. peter um so let me see if i can change that if not patrick and i can cue them up for you i think that, yeah, Ellie, I what, what is important to note is we can answer as much as we can with pre-health and i know you probably have lots of questions with career programs but they are running their own sessions this afternoon yeah that'd be your best bet there Okay, there were there were a couple comments uh, in the questions uh, that, that I was noting and then following up with Tara's presentation. Um, the one question had to do with the courses that we cover and was talking about um, 
communications course versus RIT. Uh, as a program, we have a certain number of courses that we list as a requirement to graduate from the pre-health science program. In addition to that, the college uh, as a whole has a requirement for students to have a basic competency in uh, written English and in uh, language skills. So the college beyond what we teach also has a first semester RIT course, which every student, so this regardless of your background, every student has to um, enroll in a, a diagnostic test essentially. And uh, Tara might be able to speak a little bit more about the uh, offering of those diagnostic tests and how it translates into a course. Right, so thanks, thanks Patrick. So RIT is, um, what, he, what Patrick's referring to with the diagnostic test in your admission package, it will tell you you are required to take this RIT diagnostic test, and it's a, a reading, writing, comprehension level test. And then you will get information as to whether you'll be placed into RIT or you've been exempt from RIT, and then you'll get a, pa a, a pass in that class. And then, um, so make sure when you take a look at your admissions package, it'll outline that for you. And if you're not sure, then go to the website and click RIT um, diagnostic test or just RIT test in R I. I need to take it. <laughs> W-R-I-T. Um, and the language and liberal arts, the School of Language and Liberal Arts does offer that diagnostic test and the subsequent course. Okay. And you uh, you have to have to. that first semester. You have to either take the course or pass the diagnostic test or you're not eligible for our second semester communications, which means you would not be eligible to graduate in time to apply to a career program. Okay? And you definitely want to take advantage of writing that diagnostic test otherwise you're automatically in the course and you have those extra hours so if you feel like your writing skills are in need then yes then writ that's that's what it's there for but if you feel like your writing skills are are great and you're reading writing comprehension overall definitely make sure you don't miss that test otherwise you are automatically placed in that course and and you've kind of missed the boat on writing that um, there were a couple of related questions, uh, I think, that kind of link to this. Um, there's one question about the options to switch sections in order to facilitate different schedules. And there was another question talking about the options surrounding full-time studies. Now, um, Tara had mentioned that one of the, the big opportunities you have by taking free health is that it provides uh, extra points on something it's too complicated to get into here, but there's basically a, a point system that allows students to go from either high school to a career program, or high school to pre-health to a career program, or high school to some other program, and then a career health program. Depending on what you've done, you will get a certain number of points, and you wanna maximize those points to get into the career program. Now, in order to do that in the pre-health science program, uh, you need to be enrolled full-time. Uh, otherwise, you don't get the, ad the uh, advantage of getting those extra points to, um, to get into your career program. So I don't know if you want to add anything to that, uh, Tara or Peter. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the, the, one of the reasons that's the way it's designed versus maybe a more general elective type program is pre-health is run as a certificate full-time program and that's to help with that transition as well as you're getting those additional points so what it says to the health care programs is that you can maintain a full-time back-to-back course load um, with respect to the schedules and switching sections maybe when we were in class and we had about you know six to ten sections online we don't have as many so the opportunity is that you would switch with somebody else in another section, which we've been doing that for years, it's been no problem. But now that we're online, we don't have as many offerings. <laughs> so um, yeah, your schedule is pretty well set. Would you guys not agree with that? Yeah. Can, yeah. And we try to be flexible with it. I mean, we try to offer a couple different times for people to drop in, especially if you're international, we've been offering earlier, late times, the odd time, just so you still have that opportunity. So we try to be as flexible as we can. Okay. Um, there's another couple questions in the chat there, which have to do with, um, again, a pathways sort of idea of going from high school to something to a career program. Um, I personally often talk about pre-health science as being um, kind of a stepping stone 
program, right, where you're going from something, it's going to give you an advantage to get somewhere else. Um, and so it does provide you a great pathway to get there. So there were, um, I don't know, Peter, if you want to answer this, is the idea of, you know, would you, if you're, someone's trying to get into nursing, would they take pre-health than nursing or would they take PSW than nursing or would they take one of these other programs than nursing? Yeah, and, and that's totally difficult to say for sure what the best pathway is for you personally as to, because you're still going to need whatever requirements that the nursing program wants you to have. So some people, uh, there's definitely people who have done, um, wanted to get into nursing, but what they've done is they've done pre-health they apply to nursing, they also apply to practical nursing, they apply to PSW, they see what they get accepted to, and if they get into nursing, then that's fantastic. But if they don't, there are many students who have gone through the practical nursing route first, they get accepted to that, they do that, they then work for a period of time, and then they go into nursing from that. So the other thing that, and Tara had touched on this earlier, is that you like having that idea of, is this for you? So sometimes instead of, getting right into a nursing program and then being committed to all of those years and then finding out that there are pieces and parts of it that just don't fit kind of who I am or I don't really want to do it. Going into a program that is a shorter program and gives you an opportunity to get your foot into healthcare then really kind of cements, oh, hey, this really is for me. Or we've had actually students who have thought they wanted to do nursing um, they got accepted to practical nursing and then they actually found that that was a better fit for them because in the, in the practical nursing there was more of a personal um, interaction they felt with patients versus sometimes what nursing has. So it really is about fitting what, you know, what fits your life best. Uh, in the end, as to what the ultimate decision is, that, that can be kind of difficult to say because you're still going to need to have all those, you know, prerequisites and the marks and the grades to get in but having those other options of getting your foot into healthcare, and and that's another thing we do in our program during the year is there are options for you to learn more about all of the programs and then start to see oh you know what I was really thinking about MRT but after looking at respiratory therapy I think wow this thing's really for me and so a lot of that does happen too and students switch a lot yeah for sure um, there was um, there was another question here uh, talking about IEPs and how that can be uh, managed in different programs. Um, one of the the buzz buzzwords or buzz phrases you'll hear at Fanshawe again and again, and this really it's not just words. It's it's really um, they they talk, they walk the walk. Is uh, the idea of student success and Fanshawe is a huge advocate for student success and for students of different backgrounds um, and offering up all the supports they need to be successful. And whether that's through uh, counseling, through um, you know providing a link to getting a scribe in class, providing different uh, testing opportunities or testing uh, situations, there's tons and tons of supports for students with different backgrounds. And uh, just from a, even from a perspective of kind of human rights perspective, we are trying to make things as accessible as possible to all these different programs. Now, there are certain things in the career programs where, you know, students have to have basic uh, competencies, but as much as possible, the college will work with them uh, to allow them to be successful. Uh, regardless of what your background is in terms of uh, needing extra support. Um, here, let me see what else we can see. <laughs> so somebody wanted to clarify that there are no in-person courses starting in September. So pre-health is, just to confirm that we are completely online, all classes. As of, as of um, this morning, that's what I was told, yeah. So I like Elliot alluded to, I guess anything could change, but I don't see that changing for pre-health. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say yes, you're online. <laughs> Ow, sorry. I'm just going to jump in really quick, guys. Uh, five minutes. Um, so just to let everyone listening in at home, I know we've got tons of questions still. If we don't get to that, um, please visit the info kiosk or uh, wire an email over to myfuture at fanshawc.ca, okay? Uh, five minutes. Back to you guys. Okay, I might just throw this out because uh, I don't, 
fully know the answer to this is about uh, students' access to residence and whether they would uh, decide to take that option or whether it was even available. We had a mix this year, but I would say go to the info kiosk, eh, Elliot, to, to see what residential services is offering, because like they'll be there. Yep. Yeah. But you definitely, if you were planning on being in pre-health and you had to plan to go to residence, you, you can do this from home. So we have students right now that are in our program that are in uh, Brazil, the Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, and we are still you know, setting up our office hours, tutorials, meeting with all of them because everything is submitted online in terms of our videos, all of our lectures, you can do this worldwide anywhere. Okay, um, there, there's, a, there's a question about uh, what campus uh, a student would be on if they're applying to the program. Um, I believe as part of well, first of all, the regional campuses to have a much more restricted um, number of programs that um, are available, although pre-health is one of them. So in Woodstock and St. Thomas, they do have a uh, an opportunity to be in that program. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Tara, in terms of admissions, if it is a separate application or uh, if they default to the London campus. My understanding is it is a separate application. So you apply to London, you apply to St. Thomas, you apply to Woodstock. There's been instances where if they, maybe one of the campuses were full. So say I applied to St. Thomas and I'm waitlisted, but London still had one, they might get a call to say, do you want this spot instead or vice versa? But my understanding is you apply to each campus because we have a different code at the end. And just to let students know, we oversee, so as, you know, chemistry lead, I don't only teach the chemistry two courses that are run here at London campus, but I lead the courses that are taught at the other campuses. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do here in London, is we oversee the Woodstock and the St. Thomas um, programs in terms of making sure that students, no matter which of the programs they're in, they have identical access to all of the materials, things are done in coordination with them to keep the programs as similar as possible. Yeah, good point, Peter. We often think of it as another section, um, but you, I think right. you do apply uh, separately, but we run as a program. And some students were asking about labs, and there, so there aren't any labs in, in our program. So everything will be online then. You won't have to worry about coming to campus. Um, there's also a question about um, people who may not have taken school recently, if they're a mature student or if they don't feel like you have a suitable background uh, to be successful. All of us teach, um, all of us teach this program, sorry, um, all of us teach this program from the perspective that um, we need to build you from the ground up. So starting week one, we will provide you with the essential skills to be successful throughout the program. Uh, so don't feel like you're going to be lost week one. We will give you those tools and build it through the semester or through the year uh, in order to have the, the most success. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt that we've had, sorry, Tara, I was just going to say, we, we've had students that come in and they say, oh, you know, I've always hated chemistry and I've never been good at it. And, and I take it right from that. And we all do. We really start at the beginning of saying, yeah, okay, if you've done chemistry in the path and you have some background in it, then yeah, things may be easier for you, but you can still get A pluses in your courses without having that background. But you do have to be ready to work and do the things that we give you. We will give you those tools to get there, even if you don't have that background, but you do have to be ready to, to work. The one big thing about this program, I can tell you is you have to be ready right day one to start. This is not like in high school where it's like, okay, I'm gonna wait a few weeks and now, okay, it's time to buckle down i'm going to cram for a couple nights no you've already missed the boat like you have to start day one our biggest problem with students um and 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 dropping out or having problems with their marks is that they're not doing what we're telling them to do and they're not attending the things that they do if you do all those things you can be very successful in this program yeah very good i mean we start i think it's grade six grade four to six math like we go back and say this is what we we need to build too so when we talk about the outcomes, that's where we're going to be in a year from now. So we'll make sure you build to that, which is why it's such a great preparation before you do the health career program. So if you are coming back after a long time of being out of school, I think it's a good fit knowing that you do need to, to be able to, to have the time to do the work as well. That's a really good point. 
I was just going to say, talking about uh, the idea of some people talking about wanting to do university, but they've been away from school for a bit, or they didn't get kind of the marks they wanted. Pre-health is actually a great platform to do that as well. And so, for example, we just had a student who just got accepted into the grad program in kinesiology at Western, who did our program, the, the one year pre-health, uh, and then got into Western from that, went into kinesiology, did a four year honors degree, and is now going into grad school there. So there are all different pathways that you can take doing uh, from doing pre-health. I gotta, I'm gonna jump in for a quick second here, guys. Um, it's 12.15, um, so maybe uh, Patrick pick out one more from the list. Um, but I do want to just make sure that we're we're mindful because we've got uh, the rest of those sessions starting in about half an hour. Um, so let's uh, let's tackle one more um, and then uh, then we'll wrap things up. Okay. Okay. Um, there were a couple of questions just relating to um, the the timetable, and uh, I think the the biggest thing we want to emphasize to you is that um, while you know pre health program it's a great opportunity for you to be successful. Uh, it is a lot of work and uh, there are students who come in with some misconceptions about thinking, okay, they're going to have a, a full-time job and, you know, just kind of squeeze these courses in. And oftentimes students will do six or seven weeks of school and realize, yeah, I can't juggle all of this. So for sure, that's going to depend on your financial situation and it's going to depend on your your life situation and, and not everyone has that opportunity that option but you just do i want you to be prepared that it is a lot of work um, and you can be successful for sure uh, but it is a full-time program and so don't be under any illusions that um you just, it's going to be something to do on the side um so You'll be successful, hopefully, but um, yeah, as long as you put in the work. Awesome. Uh, okay, with that, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap things up. Uh, Tara, Patrick, Peter, thanks very much for for spending some time with us this afternoon. Um, for everybody listening in at home, uh, apologies if we didn't get to your question. I know there's a ton, um, which is awesome. So we're we're happy that you're that you're interested um, and engaged. Check out the info kiosks. Um, again, the links are posted in the chat. Uh, and um, if, if there's anything that comes up after the fact, again, you can email myfuture at fantrustc.ca, okay? Um, so with that, uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, and uh, everybody else tuning in at home, and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoons and the rest of the open house, okay? Okay, take care. Take care, guys.